Hey you guys, welcome back to this two-part special of Reports on China, I'm Andy. Yesterday I talked about China's new regulations curbing the impact of the celebrity economy on the country's youth. And today I'll detail China's new under-18 gaming restrictions, as well as how the Western media covered the story, including some Western parents who quite like the idea. Let's get reporting. This Monday, China's National Press and Publication Administration released new regulations limiting the amount of time those under the age of 18 can play online games to just three hours per week. But first, don't forget to hit like, leave a comment and subscribe so that the algorithmic gods can let more people see this video. If you want, you can also buy me a coffee. Description in the link. Now, I'll briefly run through the five-point gaming restriction notice so you can see firsthand what it's all about. It first mentions that the overuse of video games by minors has become a huge problem in China, leading to a negative impact on normal life, learning and healthy growth, before going on to say that the following measures aim to protect the physical and mental health of minors. The first part orders video game companies to only allow minors to play online video games from 8 till 9 p.m. on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays, as well as legal holidays. The second part discusses the requirement for real name registration and login requirements, and says that all online games must be connected to the anti-addiction real name verification system of the National Press and Publication Administration. Part 3 says that the relevant departments need to strengthen supervision, inspection and implementation of parts 1 and 2. Those who fail to do so will be dealt with according to the law. Part 4 requires the relevant sectors to actively create a good environment that is conducive to the healthy growth of minors, including strengthening online literacy education and guiding minors to form good online habits. The final part simply confirms that minors refers to those under the age of 18. Right, now that you know the new regulation clearly, let's see how Western media have reported on it. Bloomberg, while admittedly a financial publication, certainly puts money in first place, and the reasoning behind the new regulations, the health of children, in distance second. China will limit the amount of time children can play video games to just three hours most weeks, the article bemoans. A dramatic escalation of restrictions, which dealt a blow to the world's largest mobile gaming market. They then interviewed an analyst who was upset that gaming companies will now find it harder to get money from kids. This ruling is the strictest one to date and will essentially wipe out most spending from minors, which we note was already extremely low. So sad. Fortune asks, can China stop people from gaming, where they call the new restrictions heavy-handed nannying and poke fun at the fact that China's government has the audacity to create regulations at all? National Playtime, the Communist Party, Kids You Not, is scheduled for Friday, Saturday and Sunday, between 8pm and 9pm local time. Yes, that's correct. And? Sky News seemingly either don't understand their regulations very well, or need to hire better copy editors. Their headline, China bans under 18s from playing online games for more than an hour a day, suggests that game time is restricted to 7 hours a week and not 3. The New York Times ran a fairly neutral piece. Recently, many parents have reported that game addiction among some youths and children is seriously harming their normal study, life, and mental and physical health, they quote the administration as saying. They also appear to have included quotes from their own interview with a real Chinese person, which is quite rare. Some teenage kids just won't listen to their parents' discipline, and this policy can control them. Lily Feng, a mother from Shenzhen, told them. I think this is the right policy. It amounts to the state taking care of our kids for us. New Zealand's News Hub chose to run with an image they know full well will lead readers to see the gaming regulations as something to do with communist regimes, immediately giving those unfamiliar with different political systems a negative feeling. I checked out their Facebook post with the story though and was surprised to find quite a few readers in support of the new rules. It seems not everyone was swayed by their media tricks. Jessie Colley mentioned that she quite likes the idea of restricting gameplay for kids in New Zealand. We've got limited device time in our house too, especially the teens, she says. It's not a horrible thing to have your child participate in things outside of their screens. 
John Cockshall said, What an awesome idea. New Zealand should do the same with kids here. And John Potter added, Say what you want about China, but the one thing they display, which not another single country has done or been in a position to do, is some kind of actual vision for the future. Reuters surprisingly decided this time to perform some actual journalism and ask real people what they think, interviewing some American parents about China's new gaming restrictions. Mother of three, Rally Smith Dutweiler from Ohio said, My American gut instinct? This is sort of an infringement on rights and you don't get to tell us what to do inside of our own homes. On the other hand, it's not particularly good for kids to play as much as even as my own children play. And I do think it would be a lot easier to turn it off if it wasn't just arguing with mummy, but actually saying, well, the police said so. Shira Weiss from New Jersey is the mother of 12-year-old twin boys. I think the Chinese rules are good, she said. You're still saying play video games, but you're just setting limits, she added, partially joking. Can they come here and impose that restriction on my house? Of course, Reuters couldn't leave the article showing too much support for China. So they added the ubiquitous, ill-informed garbage quote about China being bad right at the very end. While China's new rules may seem heavy-handed to some, it's hard to deny that restricting gameplay for kids who are still developing into adults is a good thing. Sure, this kind of ban could never happen in Western democracies where short-term governments are run without long-term plans and where quick, personal pleasure is the order of the day. But it seems like such rules, perhaps, wouldn't be as unpopular as you might think. See you guys next time.